Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how to complete Photoshop exercise one. To begin, you want to get into our Canvas course and you want to navigate your way to this file here called Photoshop exercise one files plus handout. Go ahead and click on that. You'll notice that because it is a zip file that you can't actually see it in Canvas. But if you click on it again, it should start to download and then you can open up this file, zip file here. Um, so you'll see that it opens up in your in your viewer or explorer. Um, and when you open up the folder, you'll see that there should be three images, three JPEG images and then a set of instructions. So the last uh, file, the PDF is the 317 Photoshop Exercise 1 Instructions. Um, you can take a look at that. That's going to open up in a PDF and you will see um, what you need to do here. These are the Photoshop Exercise 1 Instructions. Um, so we're going to basically go through all of these instructions, 1 through 8. Make sure to refer back to these so that you're following them exactly so you get full points for the, for the exercise. All right, let's go back to our Finder window. And first thing we want to do is we want to open up all of the files in Photoshop. So in order to do that, well, there's a couple of different ways. Um, if you click, if you just click on each photo, it's not going to open in Photoshop. It'll open in some kind of viewer that's installed on your computer. So um, let, let me show you how to open um, them in Photoshop. One way is you can open the program Photoshop and then open each photo. But a shortcut is if you go ahead and select all of the all of the files that you want to open in Photoshop um, and then right click, you'll see uh, an option to open with and you just scroll over and I'm going to open them in the latest version of Photoshop over here 2021. Okay, so let's see. Here we go. All right. So here we have here we have the three images. All right. So um, you want to make sure that your desktop or your laptop roughly matches mine. Um, a couple of things to note: you'll see the three files are right up here at the top, and then you have the tools menu here over the left side. Um, you can extend or collapse the menu icons on the right side. I recommend collapsing them because you don't really need most of these menu items. Um, anything else? Um, if it doesn't look like Ascent, if your if your desktop doesn't look like mine, um, you may want to go to the upper right here and click on Reset Essentials, and that should make sure that yours looks like mine. Now I'm going to go ahead and collapse this again um, so that we can get started. On the left side, make sure that yours is a double column, your tools menu. You don't have to, um, but I'm going to make it a double column so I can see each of them. Now Photoshop is nice enough to actually um, give you a um, instructions or, or let you know what each tool is doing. Very nice. I really like that about Photoshop. Okay. So, all right. So, um, first, let's just do some um, do some some poking around um, like you might do in a photo. So, this is a photo of a toy car, and one thing you'll notice is that there is something called a layers menu to the right and you're going to start using this layers menu extensively extensively um, so we're going to talk about layers in a second but before i do anything i need to make this file a native photoshop file i don't want it to be a jpeg anymore. So let's go ahead and save this file. We're going to do file and then save as. And to change the format from a JPEG to Photoshop, I just click on the format option and I go up to the top to Photoshop and then I go ahead and save. 
Okay, so this means that anything will be saved in the actual Photoshop file. So let's do that again for all of our photos. We have here the photo of the dog. I'm going to go to File, Save As, and I don't want to change the extension at the top because that actually doesn't change anything about the file. Instead, you need to use this drop down menu and change to Photoshop and click Save. And we're going to do that again for our last photo of the teeth. All right. Go to File and then Save As and click on Photoshop and Save. All right, so now my photos are all in the PSD files. So first I want to show you what we're going to do now is, is some editing of our photos. And the first thing I want to show you is the way that you should not do it. Um, and then I'll show you the way that you should do it. So the first way and the way that many people do it um, in Photoshop is called destructive editing and destructive editing just means that you're actually changing the pixels in the image um, so let's say you wanted to change um, something about this car picture um, you could or most people would go to the image menu and then maybe they want to um, maybe they want to change um, hmm, let's see what do we want to change about this one so maybe we want to go over and make some adjustments to the hue and saturation. So I decide that I want to make it sort of a pinkish and I click OK. And um, I decide, OK, I like this the way it is. And I save it. And then um, the next day I come back and I open up the file and I realize that it's not at all what I want to do. Um, the problem with destructive editing is that after you exit or shut down, you can't fix what you actually did because you changed the actual pix pixels that are in the image. Um, for now, though, we can just undo because we're still in the, um, you know, we're still in the file. Um, make sure you always have a backup. That's always a good, good plan. But we're going to show you the correct way in the way that we're going to do editing in this class and that's called non-destructive editing so non-destructive editing um, instead of actually changing the pixels just adds layers on top of the photo so that's really cool because you always have the original photo um, as the bottom layer and then anything you're making in terms of changes is just in, in a layer added on top. Think of it like a, a cake. You're just adding a layer on top and you can take those layers away. Um, and those are called adjustment layers. So let's, let's click it. Let's add some, some layers. And I have my layers menu here. If your layers menu isn't showing, um, one thing you can do is go to window and then scroll down and make sure the layers menu is checked so you can see it. It may also for some reason come up behind the Photoshop screen or on a different screen if you have two monitors. Um, so when I look at the layers menu, you'll notice that it already has formed the first layer. The first layer is called the background layer and that's always your original photo. Now what I want to do is make a couple of adjustment layers because for this uh, for this assignment, you're going to make three different adjustment layers on your photo. So to make a new layer, you're going to go down to this half moon. Can you kind of see it right here? And you just click on this. And it's going to give you a menu similar, similar to the other one I just showed you, where you can do lots of different things and fun things. And part of this exercise is really just playing around with um, the different options to see what you can create um, with each photo. For now, I'm going to choose hue or saturation, and because that's going to give you some really dramatic effects, so you can really see the differences. So again, for hue, maybe I decide I want it to be an orange. Maybe for saturation, I'm bringing it over this way or this way. Um, if I really want to do something else, I can do colorize. I'm not going to do colorize. Okay, so that's what I want my first layer to look like. And if I click out of here, I don't have to click save or anything. Um, it's just, it's already done. So you can see a new layer has been created called hue-saturation. Um, one thing, if you want to see what your photo looks like, the original file, um, you can turn off the layer just by clicking this eyeball here. You'll see that it goes back to just showing the background layer. So that's really cool. Um, then you want to do another layer. And one thing I'll show you, whoops, sorry, I made that 
made a mistake. Okay. Um, is oops, keep clicking on the wrong ones. All right, we're going to do the adjustment layer. So we're going to go back to our half circle. And one thing you can do, it's not quite as dramatic, is called levels. Um, and that's kind of a neat thing to play around with if you want to make it brighter or darker. It's not changing so much on this photo. Um, that's really neat. Remember that uh, the photos, if it, if it has a true, true black in it, it'll have a value of zero on the left side. And if it has a true white, it should have a value of 255 on the white side. And then the rest of this histogram represents all the values in between. So maybe I make this kind of layer um, adjustment and then I click outside of that and let's take a look. So now I have this one done as well. Now I have two adjustment layers on this photo and you want to make sure you have three adjustment layers when you do your edits to your three photos that you have. And I can always again turn off the photo or turn off the layers to see what it looks like with one or more of the layers. All right, so you want to add another layer to this photo and then you can go ahead to the next photo and add some layers to that one. Um, I do want to show you the histogram again using this photo because I think it really makes a big difference. So let's open up the layers menu here. Um, and before we go to the histogram, let me just point out a couple of things. This is a good photo to work with because there's lots of things you can do to it. Um, you'll notice that in this photo, the, the white area, the whitest area is blown out and it doesn't have any detail, right? A, a good rule of thumb is that you want to have your pure whites in your photos to have detail. Um, and then your areas of pure black, you also want to have some shadow details and definition. Um, so let's look at the histogram again. Where are, that's under levels. Okay. Um, so what you'll notice here is that there, the, 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 the value on the left side is pulled over to zero, um, but the, the actual, if you can see this, the actual true blacks start at the, um, the number 15, um, the value of 15. So by doing that, I don't know if you can see it through this computer, but there is a slight difference um, in the photo quality. It does look a little better now that I've made that adjustment. So let's take a look. So if I turn it off, it looks like that. If I turn it on, it looks like that. So the photo is always looking a little bit better. It's already looking a little bit better. Okay, so you want to go ahead and make three image adjustments for every photo. And then in the next video, I'm going to tell you about how to um, change the image size and crop the images for this particular assignment. So make sure you tune in to the second part of this video.